And so what you're actually witnessing is the de-emphasis of debt, the de-emphasis of fiat, because even though the euro's got a little bit bit up against the dollar, they're still in the same category. The, the, the dollar represents king fiat. And when king fiat is under attack, it's actually bad for all fiats. But the real rotation is outside of fiats into the anti-fiat category that we've given, which has seen Bitcoin, gold, and silver get a bit. And central banks specifically, who are the originators of fiat, uh, giving up fiat and buying uh, gold. On today's episode of the Wealth of Finance podcast, I have the pleasure of welcoming back Francis Hunt. Uh, he's a trader, technical, technical analyst, uh, teacher, and originator of the Hunt Volatility Funnel uh, method. So Francis, thanks for coming back on the podcast. Delighted to be back with you, Anthony. How's life? No problem. Yeah, it's going pretty well. Uh, obviously, markets, are, it's been pretty crazy since, since our last conversation. A lot has happened. So uh, I guess that's probably uh, the, the best place to start. You know, last time you're talking about the debt cycle and you're concerned about what, what, what was occurring. I guess we've sort of seen something blow up recently with SVB collapsing uh, and further challenges in the market. So I just wanted to hear your perspective, uh, opinion of what's really, what you're seeing happen. Without recalling the minutia of our previous discussion, which was some time ago, we were cautioning about the fact that there's an overproliferation of debt. And it was our opinion that the debt markets had turned irrevocably at the events of March 2020, uh, which coincided, of course, with the medical event that we will not mention. Um, and that key pivoting was also key pivoting in the gold silver ratio. Um, so essentially, what you have by those that pivoting watershed moment is the perception that debt is no longer quite what it was and debt is borrowed into existence when new money fiat money is created and at the same time the peak out of the gold silver ratio at high as 128 uh, now in, uh, bringing into view that physical gold and silver are now potentially beginning their macro anti-fiat role so the, the, the pivoting event of March 2020, uh, most people didn't realize that in that year, they have recently, in between the time that we last spoke and recently, they've now cottoned on to a narrative. So they're about three years behind uh, because we called that key event around about August when we looked at the charts, the re subsequent reaction of 2020. So they're about two, at least two and a half years behind. But they're getting there. And the, the, the thing that has filled the news in the macroeconomic space has been the phrase de-dollarization. Um, and that's not dollar bad, euro and yuan good. Dollar is the king of the fiat space. So that's fiat generally bad, anti-fiat's good. And in that time, you've had triggering events on our silver calls, gold calls, and reversals of Bitcoin, all of which we've called technically prior to um, the last, uh, I, th I think prior to the last time we spoke, but I'm a bit murky on how long ago that was, might have been six months. Um, so it might have happened just after. Uh, and so what you're actually witnessing is the de-emphasis of debt, the de-emphasis of fiat, because even though the euro's got a little bit bit up against the dollar, they're still in the same category. The, the, the dollar represents king fiat. And when king fiat is under attack, it's actually bad for all fiats. However, in the subsector of fiats, you've had a bit of rotation into the euro. So the euro has gone from a low of 0 0.95 up to 110 and a half. A little bit of a reversal today. We think that's a key level that's going to soften a bit. Uh, the dollar index has come back immensely. So there has been some rotation out of the dollar per se, but the real rotation is outside of fiats into the anti-fiat category that we've given, which has seen Bitcoin, gold and silver get a bit. And central banks specifically, who are the originators of fiat, uh, giving up fiat and buying uh, gold. So the biggest buyers of gold have been the central banks. And they've also distributed the debt instrument that is created when money is being borrowed into existence on the king fiat, which is the dollar. So China is now at all time lows uh, in terms of the, the number of US treasuries that they hold. So they're selling off those treasuries, getting in those dollars, buying gold with those dollars, getting it exported. There was the crisis of recently, I mean, there's been lots of little news to spits with we spoke, but the Perth Mint got pulled over the over the coals because the quality of the gold bars 
whilst commodity future standard were not what was stated, they were not four nines, that was to China. So this is actually telling you that the BRICS axis nation, particularly the very dominant currency nations uh, of, uh, well, macroeconomic nations of China and Russia, are actually hoarding and building gold reserves. And that's where the cheaters that are not the purest bars are being caught out. So this is little snippets of truth that are breaking out as they look like small firefighters opening up in the bushveld here. But there is a bathalus of dry tinder all waiting to be combusted. And this all comes back to the end of the debt system, which would have been my message last time, and it remains my message, uh, and that you are busy watching that occur. So I would consider that everything we expressed in our original interview um, with yourself has been very definitely validated and all the asset categories that we've suggested have benefited immensely uh, since then and has already happened in price and that this is the beginning of that glacier melting which could get disorderly and see a big chunk of ice snap off. Uh, and that, I'm afraid, is going to be the reset, the financial reset moment. And it will be given a tag in the same way 2008 picked up the Lehman's tag, in the same way March 2020 picked up the events surrounding the pandemic. But in actual fact, we already had repo crises and in interbank lending issues already in September 2019. We called short on oil during that period. So uh, the key thing about demand destroying events is that the lubricants, that is in purchasing, packaging, delivery, uh, everything is oil. And when oil goes down, GDPs are generally contracting, generally. That's a very, very correlated typical fact. You go down in production of oil um, and you go down in purchasing of oil, you're going into a contraction of GDP. So it's an interesting and hard fact that, and all those things are we're witnessing. We went into a technical recession, I can't recall whether we were speaking before or after that, but we've already, the rate hikes and the rate at which the rate hikes have been undertaken have already seen us go into a technical recession. Um, and the, this time, because they were so late to tightening on inflation with their transitory excuses, they've over tightened too fast and they're going to continue to overshoot and they're going to force an extra hard recession. So to people that have properties, homes with debt, you could continue to see rate increases while jobs are being lost. We've seen an absolute culling in the tech industry um, that has been vast across all the social media, mega caps, all of those. They've been letting go people on jobs. Yet you've seen that in an environment where cars are getting more expensive, subprime cars are falling apart, home prices are dropping, but mortgage payments are increasing. So this is the great squeeze. This is the anti-Goldilocks economy that Greenspan supposedly bequested us, the Goldilocks economy to the endless summers and long nights, uh, or long days, should I say. Now we have the longer nights. Uh, and that is, instead of very low uh, inflation and uh, mass affluence and assets appreciation, which felt so good. Now you get the converse, stubbornly high inflation and a, a, a real contraction in growth. So I've said quite a lot, but uh, I'll let you digest that and uh, jump in where you choose. Yeah, as you said, there's a lot, a lot happening at the moment. And I, I think, you know, from your perspective, it sounds like you're seeing that we're getting to that, that end game of the fiat system. And it's almost like these, you know, the central banks have to decide between their debt markets or their currency. To, one of them has to collapse and I'm pretty sure most of them are probably going to go for the currency and that's where this new system comes into play that you're talking about. Is that correct? Well, I think yes. And the problem is they they one of the same because both actually what's one, what, it's, an, it's think of T-bill accounting. Somebody's asset is somebody's liability. Uh, so it's super difficult. If currencies fall, as you'll know from the Argentinian peso, the Turkish lira and the Zimbabwean dollar, um, rates cl climb, rates climb, because risk premium and the willingness to hold those currencies are just not worthwhile. When many synchronized fiats all in the same situation, you have never really had this situation globally. You've had regionals. We had the Asian crisis where a number of Asian currencies were attacked uh, for various reasons, but you've not had a globally synchronized. So what they're going to try to do is try and make sure that no one is particularly ugly or particularly beautiful relative to each other, and they'll have the synchronized. And that's what masks the fact that this is already happening. You're having a globally synchronized currency 
devaluation. They are they are moving relative to each other, but no one's allowed to get too disorderly. Certainly in the majors, uh, because we've had the Euro rally after dipping through parity quite a lot. But they all have the same problems, and at the same time, the debt is also going down in valuation. But everybody's pensions are based on that. So we're looking at the unfolding of a bankruptcy, and this is why physical things that you can hold that can't be taken off you are going to prove themselves to be the weight of gold uh, and silver. And uh, it, it truly is. It's happening. It's happening right now. And it's case study. It's history case study because the the, the fact that you're getting relative moves between the euro and the dollar or the pound. You're in the UK at the moment and the dollar, but generally no one's pitched to having a huge run against the other is uh, how they're masking the fact that both are done. I often talk about the aeroplane flying is gold and the English parachutist and the, the American parachutist and the European one are all jumping. And then you're looking at each other relatively and saying, who's falling faster? They're all heading for the ground. And the plane is getting smaller and smaller as you look up, uh, but it's actually maintaining altitude. But relative to the currencies, it's going up. And during this period, we've had a new high for gold against the pound. We've had a new high for gold against the rand. We've had a new high for gold against the Indian rupee, the Turkish lira. Uh, we're not off very far off highs on both the dollar and the euro. So that is that is the event of watching that plane get smaller uh, and the relative valuations and how they mask it is by saying, but just look at the other guy. You're, you're no better or no worse than him. We're all in the same. We're all in this together. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that a hard landing is coming. Yeah, I really like that analogy. Um, So what, one thing that I've heard quite a lot is, is something called the milkshake theory, where it's like talking about the US dollar and how, especially during these crises, there will be lots of uh, liquidity going into the US dollar, I guess, from all those other fiat currencies that come under pressure. Do you see something like that occurring, especially, I guess, at the end where the US dollar will get push up and then potentially everything will collapse? Or There can still be a death knell strength period for the dollar. So it can't be ruled out despite its recent weakness. People uh, must bear that in mind. And a lot of nation states have borrowed in the dollar. And if the Fed continues to tighten, so you've had uh, outrider for the Federal Reserve. So they have these speakers who get given great uh, platforms to espouse views, such as Larry Summers or um, Larry Fink as well, for example, um, of BlackRock. Uh, he's recently come out and said he sees three of three, I think, or even four possible uh, moves further. So even if you just made them 0.25% moves each time, um, you're talking about a further 0.75% on existing rates. Now imagine what that's going to do to the subprime car market, the subprime home markets. We're going to have deals for people who have cash. You're going to have those that are caught by the banks who are going to have the turning the dials and squeezing denying, calling in their overdrafts. Just at the moment when they most want to spend and buy cheap things, they're going to have the least amount of money. Uh, and at the same time, you're going to have people with cash with real bargains on their hands. Uh, and such is the nature of things. Gold will possibly dip during that period because anybody who holds gold but can't make a rent check will have to sell. So you'll potentially have on the paper price some downside momentum, but the smart big money will be accumulating it. Uh, and then it's the subsequent cure, which will be further proliferation uh, and possibly even new uh, platforms of payment being introduced. In not so much space has been given to CBDCs and UBI and all of that. But I think the big goal is the flattening of the middle classes uh, and people with mortgages, people with car finance. You could be in big, big trouble. The banks are going to become weapons of mass destruction on you and they're going to be brutal and harsh and the interest rates are going to go up credit scores, you're already seeing, we're in a global Bolshevik communism. Essentially, merit is no longer the driver. The whole concept of woke is no longer about merit. It's about uh, impressions and offense and various other things. So it's social engineering. This is communism. Um, and it's not socialism, it's out and out communism. And when, when merit goes down the toilet, that's the decline of empire. And the same people that perpetuate these inversion perversions are doing this to the West right now that have done it in many other forms before. Uh, and so it's about being connected and saying the right things and uh, hanging on to your job 
uh, and a lot of cowardice, basically. Uh, so that's part of another big trend because a lot of what's happened since we last spoke, there's been an outburst of wokery. You know, Disney must have every second character must be LGBTQ and all sorts of craziness. Um, you, you've had extremity on asylum seekers in the UK getting a lot of tabloid lines, but you have similar things on the South border in America. Um, so all of these all of these social engineering things are taking place at the same time. And those are on ramps to eventually saying government will provide. What is no longer are you having private enterprise and motivated people that want to lift themselves up? Those people are cursed. They are slammed. Um, actually, welfare people are idolized by states because they entrench states' right to exist because state then serves as decider of who to take money from and who to give it to with a, help, a helpful largesse for themselves and more jobs. So what you have is state is actually becoming part of the economy. If you look at the in individual financials on the stock market, you've seen the military industrial complex actually very close to all time highs. You've got British aerospace going up very, very strongly. We've called that. That's in an Hunt volatility funnel upside break. We've seen Saab spike unbelievably, that they're the Griffin fighter. We've seen a lot, particularly in the Europeans, but even on the American side, you've got Lockheed Martin close to highs, Rayathon close to highs. So what you're actually seeing is a largesse of spending. But who spends with these companies? You and I don't. These aren't retail consumer companies. The retail consumer companies are absolutely destroyed. The, the companies that rely on government spending are the ones that are uh, flourishing, and particularly in the military industrial complex. Most of our technological realm are born and spawned out of the military. Bluetooth is a military. The internet uh, is military. Um, you know, the Tor browser is Navy. You know, all these things are developed. So dark state military complex, they have no shortage of money, and you've got equities doing unbelievably well over there, whilst in a retail consumer realm, you've got equities truly battling with the consumer. So this this shows that government is the, the, the spender of last resort. And this is a great, great problem. You're not in a capitalist society, although they're going to blame it on capitalism. You're in a mixed economy with very, very high levels of uh, Bolshevik communist tendencies that are going to cause a crash, blame it on capitalism and say, therefore, their solution is their communism that they've already half implemented with their social engineering, their wokery, and their big spending on the areas they wish to spend with friends that are working in certain select industries that actually are weaponized against citizenry with all your devices that are tracking you, surveilling you, and everything else. So unfortunately, it's quite, uh, I'm not painting the, the prettiest of pictures, but it's pretty much the direction where we're going. So it's a period and era of collapse uh, and the enablement of a new in, in, a new economic system, which will be very lockstep Rockefeller uh, and very dystopian and very totalitarian. In fact, on that point, you have the likes of Larry Fink saying, totalitarianism is, um, you know, markets like totalitarianism. They don't like democracies. Uh, there is a grain of truth to clarity and conviction and consistency of message, but that's not a message for, he likes that message because it actually encourages uh, absolute power to be vested within people like himself and the government of the day. Uh, so he's selling it almost. So there's a lot of social commentary I've just left you with, as well as some financial uh, with regards to individual equities and who's getting the money. So I know, uh, I'll let you digest that as well. Yeah, it's crazy to think. And I think a good example of you mentioned their government uh, sort of last resort, they sort of becoming the first resort in some industries like semiconductors. And I guess you could say the green agenda as well. And uh, I was just speaking to someone, uh, Michael Howe, who looks at liquidity and he basically says that majority of the market is based on the liquidity that the Fed and this, uh, you know, Chinese central bank provides and potentially the Japanese uh, bank of Japan as well. So a lot of what that's happening in the markets is based on the central banks and the governments. And then a lot of what the growth that we're going to experience in the future is going to be based on where they want that money to go, which could be those, uh, you know, what we've just mentioned there, but also other industries that, yeah. Well, as 15-minute cities become a reality in the UK, I'm sure I'm touching on an interesting point for you um, because I know there's been lots of developments there that you can expect a lot of money to be directed into virtual reality, the, the metaverse, and turning people into goggle-eyed, uh, very tightly restricted by movement 
um, living in tiny apartments in a virtual reality. I think that's the dystopia that uh, we'll see, uh, you know, the numbers managed very tightly. And freedom of movement, we've called many times for the end of discount airlines and possibly many other airlines, leaving it to be an executive privilege of the Bolshevik ruling classes and those that are extremely well connected or well resourced. Uh, so a lot of private jet flying and private flying only, but greatly reduced uh, uh, access for things such as flights to the everyday man. Um, so take your holidays while you can as well. I definitely need to make the most of it. So let's say once the system collapses, as you said, there will be lots of uh, losses of, of us assets for people who can't afford them due to the uh, collapse of the currency. Do you see, you know, we've talked about central banks buying up gold and precious metals. Do you see sort of a, a bread and woods 2.0 occurring or 3.0? Or do you see maybe the BRICS country sort of creating a commodity back currency? What's your thoughts on that? So the bifurcation that you're seeing between BRICS and dollars and the antagonism uh, I would expect to see continuation thereof. Um, Sir Ross said the managed decline of the dollar as it loses its was always the goal. This was in a um, uh, a very lengthy, long ago um, interview uh, that he he explicitly said that, and we're watching that. So I think you could get initially a spike uh, in the collapse of debt. So if the Fed were to over tighten, as they may well do here, they will force emerging markets into collapse on their debt which will then see them have to rush into dollars and dump their currency and buy dollars to secure pay debt payments. Um, and that will crush their economy. So if America goes down, it's going to go down fighting, trying to hurt. So you could get that milkshake spike uh, on the dollar, which will be very much a counter um, to expectation escalation on account of liquidity and the banking system and the access to credit that the dollar still happens to have the most portals for that. Um, but uh, a lot of the dollars are offshore in borrowings. And as a result, you could have uh, that but longer run. If that were to occur or not to occur, the dollar's dominance tapers in significance. But there is no, but that will be over a decade and a half. You know, Britain's currency tapered for a long time into just being a moderately large currency um, and had various crises along the way in getting to its current level um, and its current role and, and its degree of significance. So I'd expect the same for the dollar. But the technology might jump in at some point, um, ref the CBDCs, and, and also the need, the social need for UBI, which will be associated with pension collapse. So people who would have contributed their entire lives are going to be ripped off in terms of what they get in pension. And this is why I've always said, forget your pensions. You know, you are what the money you make and you and you've got to look at it very closely and don't leave it in banks uh, and uh, have physical things that you own. But there will also be property taxes. There will be many ways. So, you know, they're not leaving any open rat runs for people to escape the burning barn. Um, they're going to, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be lots of extraction on everything you've done smart. It could even be a gold tax or a silver tax or, a, you know, uh, if, if it, if it shoots too far or just traditional capital gains in invest in, in existing structures. So, uh, you know, they don't, they don't, the, the goal is not for you to be surviving this financially well. The goal is for you to become ward of state financially and reliant on state. That is what gives them their absolute power. That's what then tells them, okay, you will get XYZ handout providing you do ABC. And then they stipulate conduct, social score, et cetera, et cetera. Um, who knows? Even exercise tokens. Bill Gates registered a crypto for doing push-ups and in, that involves a chip inside uh, body. So the transhumanistic agenda is uh, going to start to come more to the fore as well. Uh, and that's where freaky science meets uh, biology. Uh, and my personal suggestion is you avoid this with uh, hands, knees and elbows. Uh, and you stay organic. Yeah, I think that's de definitely a great point. So you, you've mentioned sort of some industries that you think will uh, or have performed well and you think will perform well into the future. I uh, also mentioned, obviously, gold and silver will continue to maintain their current purchasing power while the current fiat currencies continue to drop, parachute down. Um, 
how are there any other ways that you're looking, I guess, to protect your wealth uh, during during such a period? And then for, uh, maybe another point as well, would you would you say maybe the the equities markets will probably increase dramatically, but then I guess the challenge is that's denominated fiat currency. So then relatively, it might not change that much. What are your thoughts on that? I think they will rise out of the inflationary part of the, the hyper stagflation. There will be stagnation, but they might not rise as much as people think, because I think the retail investor is going to be decimated and he's going to be a net seller. However, the valuations will adjust downwards. Um, but you could rise even with the valuations uh, adjusting downwards, given that currencies would lose so much ground that if overall global currencies are perceived to have lost 30%, which could mean indicated by gold and silver, 50%, let's say, it could be indicated by gold and silver, for example, going gold to $3,000 and silver to $45, which is not a ridiculous move. We have technical targets for that, which we would expect to see occur in 18 months. So assume that happens, you can assume that if, if the equivalent has happened across the euro, pounds and most currencies, overall, you've lost 50%. You could effectively see that the markets have gone up 20% um, and even have some rising earnings, but in, in a currency that's lost 50%. So in real terms, the valuation multiples could actually come off of it, um, but the, the, the market prices could have gone up Uh I think miners as well will be the last to move, but they could be the fastest to move. They could be the closest thing to emulate crypto type moves. But don't forget their costs have gone up a lot. So that's why they lag and they forward sell their product production to a large degree. It's called hedging. Um, so that's why they can lag. So we need a sustained period of higher metal prices before they start to lock in real gains. And also maybe a reduced element of hedging if they get more optimistic about the the future of prices so that makes it harder for elon musk and anyone else who's a big consumer of silver to secure uh the full um the the, the production uh, inputs that they need so uh, i think those things are the great areas um i think those things are the great areas i also think investment in being a man of many countries will give you some arbitrage as well too many people are born in britain have a british passport have a uh, you know pay their tax to HMRC, uh, and apart from that, rely on the fact that their passport allows them visaless travel to most nations, and don't do anything about establishing multiple, uh, fi the five flag strategy. Uh, and that is something we also focus in our uh, community, so that you could be, you know, you can have, uh, be a citizen of Panama, you can run a company here, you can have banking here, uh, you can have better tax arrangements. Uh, you can still visit Britain, you can still many, many things. Hard if you've got children in schools, but before you're in such a position or after you, they've they've schooled out, you should be looking at multiple flags uh, in terms of your business, your personal identity, your personal banking, your business. You essentially want five different locations for your business, your business's banking, your personal and your personal banking, your passport, where you live, where you have a right to remain, where you choose to actually expend your time, um, and that actually requires you to travel. And part of this loss of travel is going to be a directed vector, attack vector on the nomad capitalist, which they know has come up as a trend and which they know has seen uh, citizens secure various elements of arbitrage value, retaining more of their income. And all the more reason why you should pursue it before those doors are closed, because it's very hard to take away things that are retros retrospectively that once they've already been granted. But it's if you haven't seized those opportunities now while you can, and the windows are closing, we've got the Europeans wanting harmonization of tax. They are obviously communists. Uh, they call themselves socialists, but they're communists. Um, and you need, to, you need to resist uh, all of that and take real action uh, to protect. And you don't even have to have great wealth to want these things for yourself for the future. So if they're worth doing before you have wealth, not after, because you can't retrospectively recategorize income. You have to then pay your taxes um it, it, once you've already earned something so it's something for something else for people to think about in terms of surviving what is actually going to be a sea change of systems you are living in crazy times that is actually going to watch a system death and a rebirthing of a new and there's an overlap it's not one single event 
you're watching dominoes falling that represent that birthing of the new and the death of the old. So there is a, you know, there's an overlap here. This is the death, but that's the birthing. And we, you know, it's not just a complete death and then you launch the other. There is a parallel running phase uh, and we're already in it. And the death is not that far away. Um, and it's amazing how many initiatives have been prepared behind this uh, closed doors that are good to go that you won't even know of uh, during the problem, your reaction and their eventual solution that they already have ready baits, good to go. Um, but they'll let you struggle along and have some social unrest for a while and then come and tell you how they've been working night and day and they've got this brand new shiny toy for you all to play with and be part of. Um, and that is that is the direction I assess we have been taken. Yeah, it's scary to think. So, you know, would you say physical assets as well could be uh, a way to protect? Well, I guess the challenge you said there, it's almost trying to spread them out over those multiple countries at the same time as well. Physical so, assets yeah. that you can use that give you quality of life uh, that could be in short forms when supply constraints, because the more they bifurcate, I mean, for example, uh, the Treasury Minister, um, the Treasury Minister, the Treasury uh Yellen, let's just leave it at that, head of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, uh, has admitted that the sanctions on Russia has done more damage to the dollar. That's a rare moment of truth. Uh, I wouldn't put it past this particular regime that is running America to potentially double down on that and to try start increasing uh, sanctions on China. And let me just say this, the sanctions on Russia and what they did there um, were more demonstrative. The trade between Russia and America is not huge, uh, but by rolling Europe up, it obviously involved the energy crisis that Europe had going into last winter. But if they were to do that on China and start throttling the various supply, it's far, far more significant because so much in Walmart and in America runs off supply chain through China. So watch for any further doubling down on the error by an idiot cartel that's hell-bent on the destruction of the dollar uh, by design, although they're putting prime-sized morons on there to make it look like incompetence, uh, as part and parcel of the right-sizing down of America and, the, as a result, the flow into the BRICS nations. I heard there's 19 new applications to be part and parcel of the BRICS new alternative system. So, you know, the original gangsters of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa uh, are going to be the founding uh, fathers of a BRICS cartel that's probably going to grow quite substantially. You have Saudi, Iran. I mean, the Saudis uh, taking payment in Yuan. They, they destroyed and murdered Gaddafi for talking about a gold-backed dinar a couple of a decade and a half ago. And now there's so many people breaking ranks and their military was so humbled in the manner that it left Afghanistan uh, that everybody is, is now provoking the old king. And that is, an, you know, things go slowly until suddenly they go real fast. Uh, and I think we're in the part where we are having the exponential period. Um, you know, we're, we've gone from it, it's been going slowly to it's happening kind of suddenly now. Uh, every day, there is clear, clear, further intent of this. And these are oil tankers that turn around. They take a long time and lots of ocean space. But once that full lock is on and you're turning left and you're doing 180 degrees, you're no longer going uh, north, you're going south. Uh, and it's going south for America in terms of the exorbitant privilege of the dollar dominance. And that is actually bad for the West generally, who've all tied themselves to the loser's mast in terms of Britain, Europe, Commonwealth, typically Australia, New Zealand, and uh, Canada. I mean, I find it absolutely ludicrous for Australia to be following a strategy that antagonizes a nation state like China that's on its doorstep that buys its commodities. But, you know, you've chosen your friends and you will live by that sword and die by that sword. Uh, and they, uh, I would think, um, a more measured, a more Indian-like or a more maybe even Saudi-like approach of recognizing that things will unravel. But I do think uh, in the Western cartel, there will be a breaking of ranks, and it could even be something like Germany, and that will be a death knell for uh, Europe, most certainly. 
could start to say, well, listen, you know, we're not overly aligned to this thinking. We also want to maintain ties here and there, and we don't want to be isolated as part of old school. And that, that would be devastating for America once its alliance uh, starts to uh, wither under it. It'll start to become a lonely place. Uh, and then others will say, well, we want to keep a door open too. And they'll start straddling and walking both sides of the fence. Uh, and that's going to be a further coin uh, to drop out of the American pocket. Uh, and, and it's going to be a tough, tough old time. I see high rates, loss of power of the dollar, imported inflation into America if the dollar weakens. Uh, but as I say, it's, there is still scope for a, a mega squeeze on a rate rate tightening cycling, a rate tightening cycle uh, coming. Uh, but they need to do it soon because the more they get diminished, um, the less zip the less money will flow in back to um, America from offshore uh, to to seek that security. So um, it's it's going to be a very interesting period. Yeah, there's definitely a lot that people can do to prepare. So Francis, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, my last question is, what is one message you'd like people to take away from our conversation? Yes, so see the positivity in every end. Um, it sounds doomsday. It's like a death, but a death is a rebirth. Uh, don't be fooled, though. Um, the same criminals are behind the system. So you need to seek sovereignty and freedom uh, as much as is possible. And these are going to be very difficult to find. Um, you should not trust state. Should be a lesson of learning. Uh, seek out adding value. Capitalism and being a high value beat uh, alpha type or sigma type person that is regularly creating um, things you're going to be downvalued for wokery and signalization. That doesn't mean you should give up and participate in that old uh, system. So I think you have to go walk the desert a little bit. And that at the end of that, we will revert back to people that do good quality work, people that uh, do generate value adding services and use this, especially if you're on the younger side, you will see uh, and you will see the whole cycle turn back towards that in time um, and uh, invest now, save on an ongoing basis. Uh, so have forced savings. Read, th read the book around, around Michael uh, Micro Habits, James Clear, doing small positive things. I'll just hold that book up uh, for you there. Um, I've properly studied it. Do small positive things every day that compound. One of the most powerful forces is compound interest. Doing small little things, it's not important about scale, it's something that takes not 30 seconds or more than two minutes out of your morning, slowly stack a lot of things that do that. Health, mental health as well, which is exercise, outdoors, nature, get out of cities, in my opinion, generally, unless your job requires you to be there, then make sure you're getting the experience, but plan to get away. Um, it's going to be a good time to be as independent as possible. So work towards eventually being your own boss entrepreneurship, adding value. Sometimes you might need to get skills to do that. Doing what you're doing, podcasting, talking to other people, learning from older generations, what you can, applying your own common sense to it. Not everything you hear will be always accurate. Um, and yeah, be a man of principle. If you're a man of principle, whatever the world throws at you, you can live or die by that principle and you can have lived a good life. Uh, take joy and bliss out of every moment and every day. Uh, lots of experiences. Experiences go before money, go before many and many things else. It's not, it's how many years you lived in each year of life rather than how many years of life you lived. No one wants to tiptoe safely to the door. We have a community of people that specialize in that. If there's anybody uh, would want to connect, uh, we are uh, themarketsniper.com. You can book a call and have a chat. It does require an investment. It's a substantial sum. So go and earn some alpha by showing that you're disciplined and investing. And I would say gold and silver uh, and gold and silver miners will do well, possibly some crypto as well, uh, starting with Bitcoin rolling into Ethereum and down the alts as the bull market develops. But a demand destroying event, if you lose leverage too soon, could crush you. So stay out of leverage trading until you have real skill sets. And that's also something we focus on in our community. Francis, thank you so much. There was so much wisdom there. So I'll put, I'll put all those links in the description below. So if anyone wants to find more out about your work, they can get it there. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for your time. Absolute pleasure. All the best to you. Good luck for now. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you are notified when new podcasts are released. 
I hope you're leaving with some great value about investing, trading, and finance. See you on the next show.